money, 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 yeah. Everybody wants some same money, 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 yeah. Everybody wants some same money, 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 yeah. Everybody wants some, yeah. Introducing First Money, the mobile money service from First Bank. Send money, receive money, pay bills, buy airtime, and much more straight from your phone. All money is now on First Money, even spraying money. First Money, brought to you by First Bank. Can you still remember the era of video consoles just to play your favorite games? Remember Mario, Nintendo, Building Bricks, and the list is almost endless. Well, Thanks to technological advancements, nowadays you don't need the console to enjoy your favorite games. All that is needed is to download these games on your device for free or pay online if there is no free version to the game that you seek. Today we ask kids on the street if there is any difference in the console experience that they miss. The history of video games goes as far back as the early 1950s when simple games were designed as part of computer science research. For a long time, game consoles were the only ways to play video games. All that changed in the year 1997 when mobile phones joined the league of video gaming platforms. Years after, video gaming has grown into a very popular form of entertainment and a part of modern culture among the youth of today. Lots of youth affirm that they play video games regularly with one device or another. Yes, I play games on my phone. I play games on my device. Yes, I play games on my device. Yes, I play games on my device. <laughs> I do play with my laptop. In this day and age, video games come with many technical innovations that have made it easier for consumers to differentiate one genre from another and define their preferences clearly. Yeah, um, basically, um, soccer and adventure, those are my two favorite types of games. Okay, okay. I don't know what kind of game Candy Crush Saga is, but I think I also like Temple Run, which is a recent game. Strat I, I like strategy games, strategy games and soccer games, like FIFA. Um, I prefer racing, yeah. RPG, role-playing games, those are my favorite. I like the action games. The number of video games in existence are uncountable, each with its own distinctive feature. As with all consumer products, some are more appealing than the others, but this also depends on the preference of whoever is playing the game. I play FIFA 13 and um, a little of Temple Run and Subway Surf. Um, I think I like Candy Crush Saga. Football Manager, um, Endless Space. I play strategy games mainly. Um, I prefer Zuma. I do play Temple Run and Zuma. Final Fantasy, Devil May Cry, Call of Duty, you know, games like that. I do play Danger Dash, um, Racing, and Temple Run also. The usefulness of these games for many go past the need for some form of entertainment. It calms my nerves, like when I'm upset or I'm thinking about um, stressful things and all. I play my Candy Crush. I like them because when I do play them, it seems as if I'm the one doing it. So that's why I like action games. In the evolution of video games, there is a clear-cut difference between the old era, where playing games was impossible without consoles, and the new era, where these games are virtually everywhere, with those who want them in portable devices. We further ask the youth which era they consider best. I, I prefer the new era one because I really wasn't playing games the old era. The old era I was still quite little. But new era because of the, um, the advancement in technology and the graphics and everything. So you find out that you actually kind of like feel alive playing the games and the way they actually interact. Most games now are interactive. And so it's a way of actually even helping the mental activities of a person. And so I prefer the new era. I prefer the old era where I have the game at home and I play by myself instead of going to the PlayStation. I think I prefer this era when I can, I can move around and play my games. I can be in the bus and instead of sleeping in the bus, I'll just play games or I'm bored, I'll just play my games. I actually prefer the newer era where, where you can play games everywhere, where you can play games everywhere on your laptops and where you could actually have your game console. I prefer the new era because with the new era you can move around with it, you can have fun wherever you go with it, unlike you staying just stagnant in a place with your pad and everything. So I think the new era is much more 
better. Left to me, my favorite games were, you know, my favorite console is PlayStation. So, you know, I prefer holding the pad while playing games. But, you know, the ones on phones are actually not that bad. You know, they're, you know, progressing these days. So, but I prefer PlayStation, to be honest, you know, the pads and stuff. African youth always find a way to engage one another intellectually in order to move the continent forward. This was the case when youths from different universities came together to debate about an important issue that has ripple effect on the economy of any country. An issue which deserves a thoughtful policy making and implementing process. You might be curious to know what issue that is. Well, it's none other than tax. A team of proactive undergraduates from the University of Lagos put their heads together and organized a debate among universities in Nigeria. The universities were carefully selected to amply represent the presence of Nigeria's six geopolitical zones. The universities representing their geopolitical zones at the debate were University of Lagos, University of Uyo, University of Benin, University of Nigeria, University of Ibadan, Inandi Azikwe University, Amadou Bello University and University of Elorin. The topics of debates loomed around various issues concerning tax, such as morality in taxation, increment of governmental revenue through tax, taxation of the informal sector, taxation illegal incomes, and progressive tax structure. The progressive tax system simply considers doing one thing taxing half the earnings and savings of citizens, taxing off the organizers certainly had great things in mind when they thought up this initiative. Well, what brought the idea was basically the fact that not everybody is really aware about taxation. I mean, people go to school and the thing is everybody just wants to go into the oil sector or make oil money and they don't know what taxation actually does. You know, tax is compulsory. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we preach the gospel of tax and make sure that youths can leave the university and say, oh, I want to actually go into taxation. It's not, it's a really technical area, but the thing is it's actually a good industry to go into. I mean, companies are being taxed, people are being taxed, and it's also it's good for students to actually know, I mean, the rudiments of taxation. It really helps them. And the thing is, even the adults now in the industry, we actually don't have as much tax expert as we want to have. And the thing is, is the youth that are going to be the future of tomorrow. So I'm trying to groom these ones down so that when they get into the industry, we would have as much people knowledgeable in taxation. They, and again, we also carefully selected this. We wanted students from all around Nigeria, that's from the six geopolitical zones, to come together and actually debate on key topical issues. The topics are not just random topics in taxation, but actually issues that, are, that the adults are actually facing now. So we want to see how youth can actually think about this and debate on them. We want to know that they have this knowledge of taxation. So when we come out, we won't have problems of, oh, we don't have um, graduates that are actually knowledgeable in tax. So this is a great pool of bringing out tax talent. In fact, the winner of this competition is actually going to be termed the next tax talent. You know that tax is not voluntary. It's a compulsory payment for the government to provide services back to the society. So if people don't, if people are not aware of this, if they don't know that paying their taxes is actually an informal way of still getting benefits back to them, because the government takes this money and provides good services like roads, housing, healthcare, back to the society. But the problem is everybody just says our government is taking the money. Why should I be paying taxes? I'm not seeing the results. But the actual truth is we want people to know that government is actually using these taxes to actually provide these services, these basic services, back to us. The debate was a real clash of intellectuals as these brilliant students slugged it out from various intellectual angles. It was not all about the competition, as the sole purpose was to enlighten the public. My debate topic is um, taxation of illegal income in Nigeria, whether it's a drift away from the legal norms and um, the available tax regime right now in Nigeria. Nigeria is at the very um, forefront of tax reforms and um, issues of um, income taxation, personal income, company tax and particularly taxation of illegal income um, needs to be addressed, particularly that in advanced jurisdictions such as America, you have the, um, their law very well settled in terms of taxation of illegal income. So it was a very hot debate by participants in respect of all of those issues. Uh, and I think um, we have a lot of policy 
policy makers here. We have the FIRS, the LIRS. In fact, we have a representative from the Ministry of Finance, and I believe they should be able to take a cue from you know all of these to be able to implement policies and all. The topic we are debating on is on the issue of progressive tax system, whether it should be discontinued or not. The impact it is going to have is that people will be aware of the pros and cons of this system, which we are up, we are practicing in Nigeria today. And with this understanding, they can influence the government to adopt what will work for us. So the society is going to be very much influenced. And for those who don't even know that there is something like tax, paying of taxes and supporting the government, contributing to the public revenue, they will be aware of it. The event certainly did achieve its aim as the spectators claimed they were better off for their attendance. I realized that a couple of schools were coming to compete for the debate today and then I asked questions of, oh, okay, why are we doing this exactly? And the reason was, I was told was that it was to create awareness on taxes, that citizens of Nigeria should understand that taxes are good for them. It is not something that they should be against, it is something that they should be for. And so I've seen schools go head to head and I've taken good points from it, some arguing why progressive tax should be good, some arguing that, oh, proportional tax is the way. So I'm taking a lot of points from this learning knowing that I had to go back to do some more reading so it's a very nice atmosphere for me to come and learn more about taxation because I haven't had the opportunity to do tax as a course yet so I'm glad that I had this opportunity to actually come and listen to it firsthand and see what generally tax is about. Africa indeed is breeding intelligent youth who believe in the potential to change the world for the better. That's it for now on the program. You can stay in touch with us via our social media platforms on Twitter and Facebook. You can also see previous episodes of the program on YouTube. That's the TVC News. You can send us a mail. We always like to hear from you. That's to on the street at tvcnews.tv. To keep up with up-to-date information on happenings in Africa and around the world, just log on to our website, www.tvcnews.tv. Until we come here again next time, I am Bukumi Ayo Ario. Please stay in touch with me on Twitter at Bukumi TVC. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. On the street. Brought to you by First Money, the mobile money service from First Bank.